Happy New Year! It's time to pop open the champagne, light the fireworks, and get thinking about starting your very own radio station or podcast. But where the hell do you start? Well, one of the most important things to get first is a microphone. And some of the best microphones in the business right now are XLR microphones. So let's take a look at which one you should be picking up in 2023. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. Obviously, there are endless possibilities when it comes to choosing an XLR mic, and we couldn't include every single one in this list. Instead, we've got it down to our four favorites here. One thing I do want to mention, though, is this is just our personal favorites and the ones we use most often in and around the office. I also wanted to make sure this list was a selection of mics that cater to most people. So while the Newman 887AI is one of our favorite mics, the whopping price tag of £2,500 meant I probably shouldn't include it. So enough jibber jabber, let's meet our contenders. In the red corner, we have the current XLR King, the Shure SM7B. At £369, this mic's been our number one mic for the past few years now, and it's still incredibly popular with musicians, podcasters, and broadcasters alike. Next up, the newest mic on our list, the Blue Sonar, which comes in at 269 pounds. Now this one is sure to get one of the mics on this list a bit worried. Do you get it? Like sure, like sure SM7B. Good that, innit? Thirdly, we have the Spirit from Aston Microphones at 269 pounds. It's definitely a looker and it feels great, but how well does it perform? Finally, we have the budget option, the Rode PodMic at 84 pounds. We thought we'd include this one just as it's a budget option. You might not be willing to spend a lot if you're just starting out. Um, and it still sounds great. It can still easily compete with the rest of these microphones. It's also worth mentioning that there is a world of USB microphones available as well. And if you'd like to see another list where we go through all of those, let us know down in the comments. So that's our contenders, but which will win? Let's find out. The saying goes, don't judge a book by its covers. But screw that, I want my microphone to look pretty. So let's take a look at how they all look and feel in our first impression. The Shure SM7B has become so iconic in its appearance that each year we're seeing more and more copycats. It's definitely a good looking mic and it's built exceptionally well but it probably is one of the more boring mics in this list. We've said it before, I'll say it again, the free switches on the back are a bit of a faff to change. You've gotta get like a pen in there or something. And the XLR port on the top is in a bit of an awkward position, but overall, it's popular for a reason. It gets the job done exceptionally well. Now, I think the reason I like the Blue Sona so much is it takes what um, the Shure SM7B does and does it just a little bit better. It fixes the positioning of the XLR port, the buttons on the back are so much easier just to click in and out, and they're hidden away under a little Logitech logo. It comes in two colors, you can get it in black or white, so you've got the white one here, uh, and there's also two uh, choices of muffs, as well you can get a red one or a black one. Um, and yeah, I really, really do like the look of this mic. It's built great as well. There's really not a lot bad I can say about the Blue Sona. Now, if you're kind of the person that likes to stand out, then the Spirit is definitely something to look at. It's all metal build is second to none. And the look of it harkens back to microphones of yesteryear, and it, it kind of looks like the sort of thing a Spitfire pilot might use or something. I don't know, is that just me? Unfortunately, there isn't a pop shield or a muff included though. You will have to buy one of these separately, so that is gonna boost the price of it just a little bit. The Rode PodMic, um, like the Shure, is also becoming a bit of an icon in itself. You're bound to have seen this in front of some of your favorite podcasters over the years, um, and its small form factor um, is still proving very, very popular. There's also a built-in pop shield, unlike on the others, so no need to block any more of your face than need be, because uh, it's built in, which is really cool. Overall then, I think I do like the look of the Blue Sona the most. So let's take a look at some of the specs on these devices, and if you want the full specs, we will put links to each one in the description. God, we're so nice. The SM7B, Blue Sona, and PodMic are all dynamic mics, which have the added bonus of being fantastic straight out of the box. You could easily use these in, in like loud, busy environments and you will get a nice refined sound still. Obviously then, these are gonna be great for musicians and people out and about um, doing things in public. The Spirit is a condenser mic, so this will require phantom power and require a bit more 
work to get the best out of it. Padding, like what's behind me, or a sound booth is probably where this is gonna thrive the best. But the trade-off for having potential background noise is that this mic can handle lower frequencies really well, uh, and it will offer really great crisp highs. Perhaps more important than dynamic versus condenser, though, is what kind of polar pattern each one has. The SM7B and pod mic are exclusively using cardioid. This is probably the most popular polar pattern, uh, just as it cuts off anything past 180 degrees in front of it. So basically, it's only gonna record things at the front of the mic. For most people like radio presenters and podcasters, this is all you're gonna need really. The Blue Sonar on the other hand is super cardioid and no, this doesn't mean it's a microphone by day and superhero by night. Super cardioid basically just lets a bit more sound in from behind too, which might be useful in live radio where stuff happens behind the scenes. The only downside to this is you lose a little bit of direction at the front because of this and it can be quite sensitive to movement. So if you're moving from like this to this, you might lose a bit of sound now and then. The Spirit also has a cardio polar pattern, but it's also omnidirectional and it has a figure of eight. Omnidirectional gives you a 360 degree sound, meaning anything from around the mic will be picked up. This can sometimes sound a bit noisy, uh, and like I say, again, you're probably gonna wanna use this in a more refined scenario like a studio booth. Figure of eight is basically a smaller version of omnidirectional, instead just picking up a bit from the front and a bit from the back, but not the sides. You can easily switch between all three of these settings with the switch on the side, which is great, uh, and makes it a bit more versatile than the rest of the mics on this list. A few other things to look out for is stuff like frequency response, and all of these have great ranges. One thing I'll recommend is that before you pick up any of these microphones, take a look at what sort of frequency response you'll need for the thing you're doing, like podcasting, for example. And one last thing I'll mention is the Blue Sonar has a preamp built into it. This does mean you'll spend less time faffing with like amps and processors and stuff on like a Rodecaster Pro um, as it's built in and you just plug it in and you're flying. Another important factor, especially if you're out and about and on the go, is weight and the pod mic surprisingly is the heaviest and you wouldn't think it because it, it looks the smallest, but that is the heaviest one out of all four of them. So if you need something like the Blue Sonar is probably the one for you. Overall though, these mics are quite similar in spec, so the thing that will really make them stand out is the sound quality. So let's go somewhere a bit noisier. Let's go into the office and see how they sound like there with a bit more background noise. By the way, bonus points if you can guess where these quotes are from in the comments. Your body is like day old rice. If it ain't warmed up properly, something real bad can happen. Your body is like day old rice. If it ain't warmed up properly, something real bad can happen. Your body is like day old rice. If it ain't warmed up properly, something real bad can happen. Your body is like day old rice. If it ain't warmed up properly, something real bad can happen. So that's what cardioid sounded like. Let's hear what omnidirectional sounds like. So this is omnidirectional. Should hear a bit of a difference. And if we switch it over to... And now we switch to figure eight and probably sounds a bit noisier than the other two. Um, but let me know down in the comments if you can hear much of a difference. Okay, let's also go test them out in the sound booth where the spirit should thrive. Do or do not, there is no try. 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 There is no try. There is no try. So after listening back to the audio qualities, I do think it's quite close. The Spirit has quite a lot of hiss and background noise, even when you increase the decibels on the Rodecaster Pro, um, and that's with like Aphex processing and all that jazz switched on. The pod mic as well has a fair bit of background noise and is quite punchy when you don't want it to be. Likewise, the Blue Sonar is also quite punchy, um, but that sounds a bit more natural really. It's just sort of punchier than the Shure. However, a tram went past when I was filming the Blue Sonar's recording and it blocked it out really nicely. So that is a big plus for the Blue Sonar. The Shure got quite lucky in that no loud background noises happened while I was shooting it. But um, obviously the Shure sounds great. We know it sounds great. But from, pre but from previous experience, um, the Shure does block out sound quite well as well. I'd say like on par with the Blue Sonar. So overall, really close. Um, I think it's definitely between the Shure and the Blue Sonar, but I think I'm gonna go with the Shure on this one. So which mic do I recommend overall for 2023? As an all-rounder, I do think the Shure SM7B is still the best of the bunch. It sounds great, it's built great, and it's still looking pretty good for its age. In second place it has to be the Blue Sona, and it's extremely close. I think it's just a bit too punchy for my voice, so this really is like a personal preference thing. 
Um, but in terms of like the looks and the build and stuff like that, I think it does win over the shore. So if you're on a budget though, there really is nothing wrong with the pod mic. It's at least 200 pounds cheaper than the rest of the mics on this list and it still sounds really good. And that's not to mention how well it's built. This thing is built to last. And like I say, it's the heaviest of the bunch. If you're looking for a bit more versatility and omnidirectional is something you think you'll get some use out of, then the Spirit is definitely a great option as well. But overall, the price tag, the lack of the muff, and just the dips in sound quality you get with it makes it a little bit of an outsider in comparison to the rest. But at the end of the day, if you still want the best of the best and you want a bit of everything, you can't go wrong with the Shure SM7B in 2023. What rhymed? And like I said at the start, there are so many other great XLR mics to choose from. For example, the SD1 came out last year, great mic. Uh, we've got the Podcaster and the Procaster, still very, very popular. We've got another one from Aston, we've got the Origin, which is basically a smaller version of the Spirit and it's just cardioid. So many great options, honestly. Uh, have a look around, see what you think is best for you. And yeah, let us know down in the comments which you think is going to be your favorite XLR mic in 2023. But as always, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, ring the bell, smash the subscribe button, all that jazz. Uh, we really appreciate it when you guys do that. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot simpler than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the Radio.co team. To do that, just head to radio.co forward slash demo to schedule a video call with us, where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the Radio.co software.